What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And this episode is recapping and reviewing Riverdale Season 3, Episode 12, and it's called Chapter 48 Requiem for a Welterweight. And don't forget, guys, stick around for the ending because we are going to go through our recap roundups, our best moments, our best lines, if you have any, J Lag. But <laughs> be sure to stick around for that. <laughs> And as always, to all our continuing listeners and our brand new ones, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the episode. Let's get into the episode, (laughs) if you can even call it an episode. Ooh, shots fired right at the top. (laughs) I'm I'm not going to hold back. Okay, let's get into it. Um, so, okay, let's talk about your overall c- comments and thoughts about the episode. In a no, my overall level. comments, I have zero comments. Ooh. I don't I don't even know what happened except for the last 10 minutes of the episode. I'm going to be right. real. Like, I don't care for anything that happened. You know what it was? And it's something that even one of our uh, Twitter followers was saying. Um, for it to be the comeback episode after like a three-week hiatus, I thought Terrible. it was really, Terrible. really weak. Like... It was definitely a filler. You could tell, like, they, they needed to, like, explain a lot. But, like, yeah. you, he, he's right. Like, for a comeback episode after three weeks of making everyone wait, like, this was pathetic. Yeah. I was very disappointed. Sorry about it, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, just right off the top. Like, we're going to get through the episode, obviously. But I was yeah, really disappointed about how everything kind of went down and, like, what was even told in this storyline. The only yeah. thing good about it was like Archosi, like real talk. Yeah. To be honest, I think they're legit saving this season for me. Like if if there was no Archie and Josie at this point, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. I look forward to seeing them on screen. And then like when I do see them, I like light up and I'm like, oh my God, I love this show just because of them at this point. Yeah. So for me, they're like my saving grace right now. (laughs) Because everything else is shit. It's Um, true. All right, let's start from the top. So it starts off with the Jones cha- uh, trailer, and um, it seems that Gladys is just like chilling on the bed. She's like mommy now. She's like <laughs> She's cooking, mommy. like yeah, yeah. And FP is like sleeping on the couch, and Jellybean's like, I need coffee, and like FP's like, okay, well, you're not my daughter, because whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It was just a weird yeah. dynamic. It clearly. was so weird. Yeah, yeah it's clearly like I know not- what they're trying to do, but it, I wasn't like feeling the the humor in it. Like, yeah. I agree. And like just, FP just looks out of place in his sheriff uniform. Like it's just like <laughs> I just feel like they're just playing dress up like for the day. I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> Especially him. Like he's just like fully in this like garb and like everybody's yeah. like gangster like leather clothes. Like it's so random. Um anyway, cuts to the Cooper residence and Alice is like getting ready. She's got like a her wedding dress out and Betty's like, What are you doing with the, your wedding dress? And she's like well, I'm going to get baptized. I'm super She's excited She's like, I'm getting it altered. It. And Betty's like, but why are you getting your wedding dress altered? Like, like what? It doesn't make any sense. You're literally getting a divorce. Like, why? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm going to get baptized. And I have to, like, sign some sort of something. Oh, wait. I think that happens a little bit later where she has to like, sign some fucking Yeah. She's whatever. basically like, I need the dress for, like, a ceremony. Right. Um, anyway, so we find out a little bit more of it later. And then it cuts to the lodge residence. And... And Hiram's basically talking to Veronica and he's like, well, such a weird thing that happened while I was unconscious for one day. Uh, yeah. All of my stuff is gone. Like all of my drugs, yeah. all of my like equipment is missing. And Veronica's like, I don't know. Like, weren't you trying to sell that shit off anyway? Like she's trying to dodge all the questions because she's the one that done did it. And right. um Hiram basically says, like, yeah, that's really interesting that, you know, Gladys comes back into town. FP's a sheriff now. It seems that, like, the serpents, like, tried to, like, sneak in while I was gone. And uh, Veronica's basically saying, well, yeah, you, maybe you should just keep an eye on that. But, like, maybe it's not that that bad of a thing. And right. he's like, the truth will shake out eventually. It always does. I'm like, Ugh. okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Great lines, guys. Great lines. Um, then it cuts to Pop's, Pop's Diner. And... Archie and Josie, like I said, oh, best God. part of this so show cute. right now. Um, and uh, Archie is like, I just, oh. I just love her energy. She like, there's has something s- about Ashley Murray. Like, she's just, she you knows she's always been Josie. Like, she yeah. has been Josie, but there's something different about her in these last few episodes where yeah. I feel like she's like, she brings so much energy and life into this character, and I love seeing her on screen. And I'm like, 
why is this only happening now when she's like about to dip from the show i know and that's the thing like we're seeing all her good acting shops now you're right because before she was just like this sassy like lead singer yeah. of the of the thing and now she's like more than that she's got like a real character behind her she's like making real like comments and she's having like real conversations with people and it's very yeah it feels like the writing is different for her she sounds a lot more mature and a lot more fleshed out which is you're totally. right a little yeah. unfortunate that she's leaving now so i'm trying not to like be too attached to her because i know she's gonna leave <laughs> so no but there's even something beautiful about the way she what she brings to that role and then like it brings it brings it out of kj i feel like you know yeah, like where he's not like that typical annoying like like archie there's I mean, something so cuter about him too he's annoying. annoying i i know but, but the, it, yeah anyways i love it so yeah so they're just like sitting at pops and they're like just chilling and he's like let's go watch a movie and josie's like i'm gonna go do some like school stuff because i need to like figure out where i'm gonna go because julia like rejected me or whatever yeah and then archie's like well okay then i'm just gonna go boxing and she's like yeah uh does like boxing have to do with school and he's like no not really but like i'm basically like a con <laughs> like an ex-con now so like i have nothing else to do with my life yeah and she's like okay cool bye like i'm surprised that she's even putting up with him at this point like she must really like him for her to even put up with his waist madness right now i mean it's so it's just archie but i find it funny that like this kid's been through like eight different sports <laughs> and like now he's landing on boxing like you done now, football yeah you did wrestling you did i don't know god knows maybe badminton or something like you did everything <laughs> and then now you're doing boxing like why yeah. couldn't you just stick to football like i agree it's just so whack i don't know anyway so he's gonna do boxing with sheriff keller right um daddy keller so then it cuts to school and betty and jughead are just talking they're like yo this is so weird with my mom my mom's you know, like going crazy. It's such a weird yeah. situation. And Jughead, I think he kind of tries to say to her, um, like, maybe you should just like investigate a little bit more and like just keep an eye on it. Like, I don't know. Like, he just basically says, like, let's deal with this a little bit later. And then right. it cuts to him, both of them walking into like the room where the serpents meet at school. And there's like two serpents left. There's like four, four guys. <laughs> And they're like, well, he's all like, the what's going on, bro? <laughs> yeah, they're like, like, they all left. The girls left us. Yeah, they're all gone to the pretty poisons, which is Cheryl and Tony's crew. And Jughead's like, oh, they, they're like, they're doing that because like I done banished them. So I'm going to just like reverse the banish and get them all together and it'll be fine. Like, it'll be fine. We'll be good. Did you I'm care like, about this storyline? No, because number one, you banish them. So you can't just take back a banish. That's not how a banish <laughs> works. Like, I know it sounds stupid, but you literally can't just be like, oh, you're banished. Oh, you're starting your own gang. Oh, let me just like bring you back into the fold. Like, you yeah. either start the war or you finish it. Like, I... Anyway, it's if, to me, I was very annoyed by this. And the way the episode ended, I was like, are you fucking serious? Gladys is a Gargoyle queen. Like, I don't, I'm done. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But then it cuts to Daddy Keller and Archie in the boxing ring. And Archie's like doing whatever. And Archie's like, I want to get out there. I want to be like the best of the best of the best art, like fucking boxers. And uh sheriff keller's like um you need to <laughs> chill the fuck out like we literally just yeah. started two days ago um i want like you need to like take time like boxing takes a lot of time you don't want to go in there when you're not prepared and archie's like but i need to know if i can like do this for for reals like for reals what like you're gonna become a boxer like professionally like, yeah like is that what your end goal is like because you s suck at the sats you're gonna become a fucking boxer Seriously. you're literally like a peanut beside like all these like, other just boxers. go be I, a football player like, oh, like why I, why i just don't understand like his mindset and where is fred like like, go find Seriously. your real dad and see if that's, he can give you some honestly, advice. Honestly, like, that's what I was missing in this episode. I was like, where is his father, though? Like, I get it. Like, Keller's there. But, like, I feel like Fred has been a part of his journey this season. And I, and he was missing this week. Yeah. Like, not even just, like, one tiny scene of him being like, hey, like, what are you up to? He didn't even show up to the game. Like, he didn't his, even show up to the game. Like, yeah. his son could have died in that ring and he wasn't even there. I know. I was like, this is just so weird. Ugh, like, the fact know, that they guys. don't, like, h hire these actors in for these big <sighs> moments, it's just, like, really, really poor writing for me. And I just, like, I can't, guys. I'm really, really Like, struggling. do you want me to pay for him? Like, I'll pay. I'll give you guys money. <laughs> I'll give you money. Pay the guy for a 10-minute, not even four-minute scene. And that's it. Like, take my money. 
Because <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Like, <laughs> Just put him in the goddamn sea, you guys. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so anyway, then it cuts to Gladys and Veronica. Oh, God. I can't even guys. <laughs> I can't. I literally, I'm going through my notes, oh my and I'm like, these I can't. two are killing me. Uh, I was like, uh, they're really annoying me. They're I don't so know annoying. Why. I don't they're know like why. This, this whole thing between them is just like so dumb. So Veronica's paying her, but then Gladys is like, okay, well, while you're paying me, could you please spy on me, spy on your dad for me? And Veronica's like, I'm not spying on my dad for you. And Gladys basically says, well, you want your family out of the drugs. Like, would you rather have me or him? And she's like, no, I want my family out. So she's like, okay, yeah. then, like, you help me sp- help spy on him and then, like, give me all that information and I can, like, use it against him later. I'm but like, why okay. would she do that? She's his daughter. But I think it's the whole thing. Like, that's why she burned the drugs in the first place. She did it because she wants them out of the whole game in the yeah, first place. Like, it's know. not a good vibe or whatever. So I get the reason why she's doing it. I'm just over like Veronica being involved in this. Like go to school. It's so true. Go to school. And like even Reggie wasn't even there this week. Even he was like, I gotta go to school. Like (laughs) I'm like failing my classes. Like even he probably said that. Like I'm just over her being in the middle of this freaking like business transaction. Like yeah, I'm done. Reggie's over it. We're over it. Like come on guys. So then it cuts back to the boxing ring and Elio is talking to the guy and he's trying to set up a fight and he's trying to find another fighter to fight like his fighter. And Archie sees Who, by them. the way, looks like he's a 55-year-old man. He like, looks like a When I saw ass- him, I'm like, wait, that's your fighter? Like, what are you doing? Like, seniors night? <laughs> like, <laughs> he doesn't look like a young fighter person no not at all i mean that being said archie deciding to go against a 45 year old to fight yeah. like, is just his fault but like, like he's uh, an idiot uh and the fact that archie beat a 45 year old is even sadder like come on guys what the fuck is this shit like <laughs> boxing ring uh, so anyway elio so he goes up to elio and he says i'll i'll do it i want to get into the ring um, and Elio says that's fine, but you have to lose after the third round. Like clearly, yeah. it's a setup. They're like, gonna situation. they're gonna set it up. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'll pay you five thousand dollars to do this shit uh, if you do it right. And he's like, okay. He's like, here's half right now, and you'll get the rest later. And like Archie's like, money, 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 beach. And so he says yes. Uh, so then it cuts to Veronica and Hiram at the lodge residence, and Veronica tries to like steer. Hiram. So essentially she's like, okay, dad, I got a great idea. Why don't you just work on the prison now that you like lost all your drugs, just work on the prison and then arrest all the drug dealers and that'll give you revenue for the prison. And Hiram's like, great idea. I'm going to one up you and be like, now that the ghoulies are gone, (laughs) why don't I just take the ghoulies over and I can keep doing my drugs? (laughs) She's like, that's not exactly what I was trying to (laughs) say to you. Her face when he said that, she was like, uh, guess I'm going to go back to school now. I was like, go, 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 go to school. (laughs) God damn it. Um, so then it cuts to Jughead and Tony and Jughead basically, I mean, this moment was kind of fucked because Jughead being the leader that he should be should have been a little bit more sympathetic, but I felt like he was a little bit condescending. He was, and I and I did feel like a lot of these things are happening when he's already distracted. Like, yeah. even him and Betty couldn't have a moment together for, like, them to decide what the fuck they're going to do with Alice. Like, <laughs> exactly. I just feel like I just feel <laughs> like he's not fully there because he's no. a part of so many different things and yeah. so many different missions. Yeah. So he's not giving it his full attention, like, and he doesn't really care. He's like, well, let me just, like, deal with these people right now. Like, yeah. let's, just, let's just pull them back in. Exactly. So he talks to... Um, he talks to Tony and then he's like, okay, why don't you just like end this vanity project that you're doing with this super serpent gang and just like come back to the fold. And she was like, Ugh, whatever. Like, I don't even want to do this. And then Cheryl comes in and she's like, what are you guys talking about bitches? And then <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't say that, but whatever. She, and then like, they just like disperse. Like Jughead's like, okay, bye. And like, nothing really happens from that. I'm like, Jughead, that's what your version of trying was like, seriously, seriously. you're so lazy. So then it cuts to the Cooper residence, and this is when Alice is signing a release form. And Betty's like, why are you signing a release form for, like, a A ceremony? Yeah. And Polly and Evelyn are there, and Evelyn's like, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. It's not a big deal. And even Alice is like, yeah, it's not a big deal. I sign worse forms when I sign up for, like, a gym. 
23 hour fitness <laughs> yeah I, re- I heard that too i was like really guys honestly so um yeah so that's what happens at that moment and they're still talking to betty saying like why are you so resistant to this whole situation like jesus is coming like whatever join the farm hashtag join yeah. the farm then it cuts to Gladys and Veronica at the Bon Nui again, and she relays that information. She's like, well, my dad's just trying to get the ghoulies now, so, like, maybe you can, like, like get the Like, it's ghoulies. just all back and forth. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm like, legit, nothing <laughs> happened in 40 minutes. Yeah. It was just going back and forth. It's like back four and scenes. Da, 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 da. And then, like, at the end, it's, like, sickening. Like, it's yeah. like, you guys could have just, like, shortened this down to a 10-minute episode, I think. Like... I agree. YouTube, YouTube episode. <laughs> like, we could have done it for you guys. <laughs> I could have acted it up for you guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, then she takes that information. Gladys is like, ooh, good job, girl. Bye. So, that's the end of that scene. And Veronica's, like, feeling some type of way about it because she, like, I don't know. Like, that's the thing. Is Veronica feeling like she's betraying her family or is she, like, glad that she's getting her family out yeah, of it? Yeah, like, I don't you know. You can't be in the middle. Like, you can't be like, oh, am I making the wrong, right decision right now or am I not? Like, you got to stick to your guns, I, yeah. girl. So then it cuts to the boxing ring again and uh, Daddy Keller finds out and uh, that he's going to be fighting. And he's like, yo, that guy's like really dangerous. The last person that he tried to like fight, he like paralyzed him or something. So like, don't do it. And Archie's like, well, I'm going to do it. And Daddy Keller is like, well, <laughs> if you're going to be in that ring, then like you can count me out, of, out. as your yeah. manager. Bye. Oh my and this guys. was just like another Archie moment, like a stupid, dumb Archie moment where like he gets so hype about like nothing. Like, about why nothing. are you getting so extra? Like, just about chill. Nothing. Like, you'll have a match in like a week or two. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, what is what's the rush? Like, what are you trying to become like the next like freaking Floyd Mayweather? Like, it's literally like you're a high school student. Like, what is your problem? And, like, I think in the beginning when him and um, Josie had that talk, she talked about scholarships. She was like, I'm going to get this. Yeah. Scholarship. And then he was like, oh, true scholarship. So if they had taken that and been like, OK, like he's just doing this strictly for like a scholarship. He wants to right. be on a team. I'd be like, OK, this totally makes sense. Like, no wonder he's so hype. He's so like aggressive and into it. But it wasn't even about that anyways. It was just him being Archie. Like. Yeah, because there is no fucking scholarship for fighting in a creepy ring like by yeah, yourself like, as a teenager. That's why. I, I just wish <laughs> they made line. they they made the motivations make more sense. That's yeah. all I. That's all I ask. Like he can do all this crazy crazy shit. Just make it make sense. Even if it like was like I'm thirsty for money. Like I'm so poor right now because exactly. I'm out of jail and like I don't exactly. have any money and my dad's out of work and like there was no line that could have just been put in there to show that he's desperate. Like he's not like, in a even, desperate situation. I think someone on Twitter even was like, "But why would Archie need money? Like why would he yeah. even take the money in the first place? Like, why he is he thirsty he, for the money? He's not. Yeah, like it doesn't even make sense. Like." He's never motivated by money. So, like, why? <laughs> like, it's yeah. just, I That's don't the know. thing. Like, usually he's, like, the honorable person. He's, like, oh, like, my honor versus everything. He's, like, oh, I can't, like, pretend to lose a fight. And then he's, like, you want $5,000? Like, okay, bye. Like, yeah. what? Like, since when? Since when is his character that person? It just, like, know. was a bad right for him as a character. Um, but also, like, it's very much in line with him doing stupid shit. So, like, I don't know what you guys want to do with this character anymore because I thought he was out of the woods. I thought he was a smarter person. I thought he killed his old, like, dumb, stupid, immature self. But clearly, that storyline was bullshit. And, so. and all the things I'm picking at, honestly, they're, they're easy fixes. I know that maybe you guys want to take him down this road. That's fine. I'm just saying, like, make it make sense a little bit more. Yeah. That's but it. here's the thing. They They're did, easy fixes. They literally did this. They took him down this road I know, earlier in the I season. Know. He was literally fighting in a fight club in a jail. I I like I can't reiterate it more than enough that like this is like a recycle of the beginning of the season. And it's and like I don't, I don't want to even take it there because I know. I and know. it fucking kills me. Like I'm just like, what is this season? I don't understand. Um so then it Anyways. cuts to Cheryl and Tony, and she's teaching the pretty poisons how to, like, do archery. And I'm like, okay. I was like, fine, I'll buy it. <laughs> fine, give me a ticket, I'll buy it. Fine. <laughs> like, I'm so, here, okay. <laughs> they're fi- they're doing the archery, and, like, everybody's like, yeah, bitch. I'm like, I'm now I'm like Katniss Everdeen, whatever. And Tony is, like, teaching them, too. And... Cheryl like goes over and she like kisses. She's like, oh, I'm so happy that you're like teaching them. And she's cheesed. <laughs> like Tony's like. She, Cheryl kisses her and Tony's like. Uh. 
and i'm like what the fuck i'm like what did she do now and then tony's like it's jughead i'm like oh okay like uh, it's somebody you weren't cheese at her you're cheese at someone else well yeah. just kiss your girlfriend what's the problem <laughs> she's like i got something on my mind and so <laughs> she's basically like yeah jughead made fun of the pretty poison she he called them like a vanity project and cheryl like took that and she like ran like 75 Yo, steps ran. down the street like did you not learn your lesson literally from an episode ago where you like done fucked everything up and now you're yeah. just going and inserting yourself and starting some shit again so she's like i'm gonna show how jughead how poisonous our pretties really are and like okay guys writers i was writers. like okay keep going <laughs> <laughs> one more time i'm here <laughs> i'm holding on to this table <laughs> I'm literally like Jack and the Titanic. Uh, <laughs> uh, so then it cuts to the front of Pop's diner and it's like yeah. nighttime. And, and it looks really cool because like the lights were like the neon lights were really yeah. bright. And then Cheryl's like in the front. Yeah. Right. And then like the guys show up. The guys so are like very leaving. much this. Oh, they're yeah. leaving. They're leaving Pop's diner and all the girls, the pretty poisons are standing <laughs> out by their car. They're like, hey, little girlies, what are you guys doing? You guys want a pillow fight? And yeah. so they're obviously like condescending and I get they're like doing like that whole like, it was oh, too like, much. First girls. of all, it was too much because I, I was like, they they've never been this sexist before ever like they've never made a comment like this like why are all of a sudden like are they freaking out like they've never been the, i've never noticed that from their their whole group where like they're not inclusive when fangs to women. was like saying it when fangs was saying stuff uh, he was like laughing i was like yeah he yeah. doesn't even believe what he's saying like because he exactly. would never say that <laughs> i'm like if it was anybody else if it wasn't fangs if it was like some like neck serpent that we've never seen yes, before yes then i'd be like okay cool totally. but you're building these characters like sweet pea who is basically like i want to be your boyfriend to josie and now he's like a womanizer yeah. like since when like these characters are so poorly written that like they can't even like make them seem believable when they act a certain way you know what i mean like yeah they literally could have thrown anybody else into that like point and say yeah some guys are ignorant but like it couldn't have been fangs and sweet pea they're literally like the nicest ones and they're the ones that support tony the most so right, why would they right. be f making fun of her so much so anyway he does that they both do that and then cheryl's like here's a message to your like group um girls like go get them so they fucking get beat basically up by the girls, fight essentially yeah like they basically fight but you don't see it because like it goes on like cheryl's face and yeah. she's like <laughs> and i'm like what the fuck so, like they're fighting now like why like, what kind of lesson it was this guys like what kind of lesson was this to teach kids like just fight it out yeah no like you guys can come to an agreement and say like we're good like why are you teaching them to fight each other like physically fight each other right well Not i even, guess like, like with words tony like figure talking to her later like i guess figures out that like it's not a good thing that's not how you deal with shit but i still didn't really i don't know anyway it was weird it was it was a really weird thing so then it cuts to gladys telling fangs and jughead um to uh retaliate and like get the ghoulies on your side so she's like connecting everything together because fangs is like now beat up and uh jughead's like like you want me to like talk to the ghoulies the ones that like almost burned pops down i'm like do you forget the fact that they literally almost killed you last season because that's like <laughs> i feel like that trumps that basically also everything. happens <laughs> like come on bro yeah it's true. and she's like no no like just talk to them it's totally fine i'm like no you should probably not talk to them <laughs> they literally tried to kill you last season oh um so anyway so that's his now his i new think mission. they forget even what they wrote because <laughs> everything gets so confusing i think they even forget that that happened i mean like the writers trust me later on this episode i got hella ass confused with like the ghoulies <laughs> and the gargoyles and yeah. what the hell was happening with that that yeah i literally feel like they were like on crack when they wrote this yeah for sure uh so then it cuts to cheryl and tony and uh cheryl's just like going in like cheryl's like so happy and tony is like going in so hard on her she's like why would you do that? Why would you tell the pretty poisons to kick like their asses? Like that wasn't what we like we we set up this gang for. It was supposed to be about uh, like you know inclusivity and like all community. And Cheryl's like, "What? What's wrong?" And Tony's like, she's like "What did I do now?" Yeah, she's like, "Whose gang is this really? Is it yours or mine?" So there's like a little bit of tension there, which I understand because like yeah, I guess that's what they're sense. like their like shit is, but. It was also very much like, okay, so now Cheryl's just going to, like, listen to Tony. Like, she's not going to, like, retaliate. She's not going to fight back or nothing. 
She's no, I'm gonna... sure that's going to be a, a big like thing in their relationship. Like, I feel like it's going to control. True. Like who's going to be who's the top essentially in the situation. Because yeah. uh, I think Cheryl's used to that having that power. Right. Right. And Tony's like keep keeps putting in her place like episode after episode. She's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Yeah. Um. So then it cuts to school, and Josie and Archie once again the most adorable couple of all time. Yeah. Uh, yep. they're just hanging out, and she's like, "Hey, boy, I'm gonna like be singing at the Bon Nui. Like, do you want to come through like tomorrow or whatever?" And Archie says, "Sorry, girl, I got to fight and like pretend to lose, so I'm gonna be like busy." And she's yeah. like, "That sounds like really fucking sketchy." She was like, so why? shook. She's like. <laughs> That sounds shady, Archie. Yeah, she's like, that sounds really shady. I'm like, I love Josie. Like, honestly, they've been Literally giving her love, really good lines. And, like, love. she just, she has, like, you're right. She has it's this, like, very fresh energy that she's bringing to Josie this season. And I don't, like, I really don't know what it is. Like, maybe she's, like, on this glow up. Maybe she's just excited to leave the show. Like, I don't know. But she just She's seems- excited to probably have her moment. Yeah. So maybe it's coming out like that, too. But I just think she's such a fresh... I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, guys, I don't know what it is because she's been around yeah. since the beginning. So I don't know what's different this season. I just think I guess maybe we're just craving this type of you drama. Know, drama or relationship. And that's why we're loving it so much because it just feels so normal. Yeah, it really does, especially and amongst like all the craziness that's happening yeah. this season. And like even though there's like a, a weird boxing ring storyline, I'm still like living for totally. their conversations. Totally. And you know, Josie was trying to be supportive, but at the same time she was saying to Archie, like, I think that you're worth more than than five thousand dollars. Like if that's what you think that you're worth. Like she was making some really good ass points and she wasn't like using big words like Veronica, like, oh, this is like terribly impeccable. Like you why would you what? do this? You're like, so right. You know what you're I mean? So right. I was trying to like compare like what would Veronica say in this moment? And like, what did Josie say in this moment? Yeah. And like, yeah, like it just felt so much more genuine, so much more like real. Whereas right. like Veronica, I feel like would have been like, you're so hot. Like, let's go fuck it out. <laughs> like you'll win anyways. <laughs> like, I feel like that would have been her answer to his like problem. <laughs> yeah. And Jos- and she Josie doesn't shade him. She's not like, ew, like you're disgusting. I'm going to break up with you if you do that. She basically says like, <laughs> Veronica you're- didn't wouldn't say that either. Though. <laughs> no, no. She I'm not saying like, no, but I'm just saying like Josie could have, like the character that she's been like been portrayed at in the like yeah. before she's been this person who's like she doesn't take no too shit good. from nobody i'm too good for this dumb shit but like she really like literally turned to him and she's like you're better than this you're worth more than so- like being somebody's punching bag and i was like girl i love yeah, you so true i know you're like really like li- i'm living for you right now i know so then it I cuts know. to betty and kevin once again kevin is back Ugh. to storyline z because oh he's God. literally gone from the storylines again um so they're in the like lounge area and betty's like yo i found this crazy list of like all the survivors from the farm i want to like i want you to help me call them up she's like basically leah remini yeah in in the scientology <laughs> documentary <laughs> that's basically who she was this week just picking yeah. up the phone and giving those people calls and he's tom yeah. cruise and he's like i can't do this because i'm gonna join scientology Because i just joined <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so basically that's what kevin says he's like no sorry um i actually was talking to evelyn after the whole moose thing happened i'm like didn't that just happen like a week ago like you didn't talk to your friend this whole time and now and like since when did you talk to evelyn like yeah. why don't you go talk to your friends like your one friend like your one <sighs> so best weird. friend i don't get it and he was like well he there uh evelyn said that he she's gonna introduce me to some like gay farmies i'm like that sounds like a porn i watched once like what the hell is this <laughs> stupid <farmies>? ass <laughs> what is this dumb uh, ass storyline that he's now we, chasing like see, gay farm yes, boys like what here we go fuck? again with kevin chasing more dick like oh why couldn't God. it just be about him finding finding himself peace or finding himself like or finding happiness like why couldn't it just point. be that yeah that's like the point he spins of the farm. it to be like he's gonna introduce me to guys like, like what like, why is he so like dick hungry i don't get it like i'm just i'm just guys i don't know what's happening okay let's keep going let's keep we're getting we're getting through it so fp and jughead are talking and jughead asks fp if the ghoulies could get immunity so then he can like get them back into the gang and fp's like okay okay hold on wait 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 hold on backtrack Jughead is getting the ghoulies to do what? He's getting immunity from FP. Like, he's like, I don't, like, unbanish them, essentially, from the town. Because that's what happened. From town. Okay, yeah. okay. And FP's like, okay, fine. And that's the okay. end of the scene. 
And I'm okay. su- I'm not surprised that you didn't know what is happening because I was very confused <laughs> and it w- happened so fast. Guys, I texted j and I'm like, you're going to have to explain this to me during the podcast <laughs> because I'm I'm lost. <laughs> I'm so lost. Yeah. Um, so then it cuts to the Lodge residence and Hiram is like trying to set up like a dinner with Gladys. He's like, yeah, oh, I think, I'm going to have a I meeting. I think Hermione's like, Hermione's like, um, why is the rum out? Like the whiskey. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'm calling Gladys over. She's like, oh, the like, good rum. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hermione and Veronica look at each other. They're like, oh, She's shit. Like, oh, shit. It's about to happen, though. If Hermione was smart, she should have gone and talked to fucking Gladys herself instead of sending her stupid daughter. Poor Hermione. Like, <laughs> I don't feel bad for Hermione. I feel like she's been playing this like backseat, front seat game all the time. Because they're not time. giving her any scenes. <laughs> they just no, bring her like, whenever they need her. That's true. But I guess like it doesn't make any sense for Hermione to like, I don't know. Like maybe she's None just not confident in herself. <laughs> None of this makes sense. <laughs> so then it cuts to, I'm just going to keep going, guys. Then it cuts to Veronica uh, and she goes to Gladys and she's like, you can't have dinner at my place. I thought you were going to keep my yeah, family out of it. Yeah, you can't sit with us at how, our dinner table Yeah, in our like, house. how dare you? And Gladys is like, ooh, you trying to shake me <laughs> down, bitch? Well, I'm not scared of Why you. Why does she make everything sound so sexual? <laughs> Because first of all, I'm already weirded out at their relationship. Like, I'm already like, why is a mom hanging out with the student? Like, what's going on here? And then she makes that comment. She's like, oh, you're going to do that to me. And then like after when she meets, she meets her with Hiram. She's like, oh, your daughter's so gorgeous. I was like, what? Anyway, What's we'll get back on? to that later. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, so basically Veronica tries to shake her down and she's like, if you tell my dad, then I'm going to tell your your son. And that's <laughs> like, I don't fucking care if you tell my son, girl. She's like, what, my bitch ass son? She's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I set him in jail. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I'm fucking killing myself. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> then it cuts to Archie and Elio at the ring. And Archie's like, yo, bro, like, sorry, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, okay, (laughs) hold on, guys. Wait one second. Just let's pray for the moment that Archie actually, like, does something smart for once without having to. He follows through. Like, like, think about it. He can't follow through. No, the problem with him is he makes a dumb decision and literally five seconds later regrets it. Like, that's literally this whole show so far. He decided to go to jail. He regretted it. He decided to get into the fight club in jail. (laughs) Ragrets. Like, (laughs) literally, Archie's ragrets. So, anyway, so he basically says to Elio, like, hey, look. I'm not going to do this. Like, I'm not going to lose a fight because Josie told me that I'm worth more than this. <laughs> My new girlfriend, she cool. Yeah. And she don't want me to fight. But Elio's like, no, you're fucked. Like, you can't just like back out now. Like, there's too much like at stake, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like, people are betting on you to lose. So you better not. Right. Like, back out and you better just follow the rules. So then it cuts to Jughead and he's talking to like this last ghoulie. I remember seeing him during the riots from last season. And he's like, yeah, basically everybody dispersed after, you know, Malachi went to jail. I don't even know what happened to Malachi, to be honest. He literally disappeared. Yeah, he was hot. Uh, Yeah, that's why I'm like, he was hot. Like, where did he go? So he disappeared. And then Penny Peabody's gone. So this new guy, Kurtz or Kurt, is now the new leader. And he like basically this gargoyle or the ghoulie guy was like he's a weirdo though so find him so yeah i think they reference like um i don't know if you've guys seen the film apocalypse now yeah it was like that moment where they reveal marlon brando's character i think that scene kind of is supposed to be that scene apparently oh or, the scene like when he goes into the cave and shit and there's like a something darkness like and that shit? yeah yeah okay yeah i can see that i can see that um so then it cuts to him going into this like underground gross area and he sees all this gargoyle paraphernalia. So this is when things started to get really confusing for me because I'm like, was he talking to a ghoulie? Did I miss something? Why are there gargoyles now? And like, why are they all wearing masks? And why isn't yeah. he like calling his dad to be like the ghoulie? Like the gargoyles are down here. Um, so anyway, they're all like playing the game. There's like writing on the wall. There's like a statue of the gargoyle king. And so he sees Kurt like sitting in a corner and he's like, I'm the Serpent King and I'm here to like make peace or whatever. Like, come join my gang. And the gargoyle, like this guy, Kurt, is like, 
um no like the the world is different now he's saying all this like crazy stuff it's funny that you say apocalypse now now i totally see it for sure right yeah um, yeah. yeah it's definitely connected. and sorry i think his name in the movie was kurtz oh so it is kurtz like okay. colonel walter kurtz yeah all right all right a little film trivia for us yeah um, so then, that was a good film though i think we watched that together yeah yeah we? it was good yeah yeah in yeah. history class i think <laughs> yeah um so then um He's like, oh, do you just want to play this, like, gargoyle game? And Kurt's, like, goes crazy. He's like, you think this is a game? He's like, we are living a prophecy. You are all sacrifices waiting to be made. He will decide and he will choose. Only the worth will worthy will ascend. Sorry, I totally botched that, but that's okay. The writing was really bad. It's fine. Yeah. Um. So... He basically so like, is like, who is this new guy now? I don't know. Like, the Gargoyle King never died, I guess. Like, it's not oh ending God, ever. So it like, it's just, I can't. <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore, guys. <laughs> it's so yeah, confusing. I don't know. I don't know. So then it cuts back to Daddy Keller and Archie at the ring. And Archie apologizes. He's like, I'm so sorry. But just as an FYI, Elio paid me money to go down in this fight that I done told you about that I shouldn't have done in the first place. And... Like, Daddy Keller is like, are you fucking serious? Like, why did you do that? You're so dumb. And he's like, well, I can't get out of it now. And I need you in my corner. Like, literally, and, I need you in my corner. Like, like you're my coach. Yeah, you need to be my coach or I will die. So he's <laughs> he's like, are you going to do everything that I say? And Archie's like, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, so then, like, he's training with him again. I'm like, Rocky, I'm just, I can't. I never liked that movie, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so then it cuts to <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> then it cuts to the lodge residence and Hiram and Gladys are talking in the study and Veronica just randomly comes in and she's like, Oh hey guys, what are you guys talking about? Like what's what's going on in here? And Hiram's like, uh well, like you you shouldn't be here. This is a private conversation. And Gladys like acts stupid as if she's never met Veronica. Yeah, before. this is where she calls her gorgeous. Yeah, BT dubs. Like, you gorgeous. And Veronica's like, okay, cool. And even Hiram's <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> He's like, I know she's my daughter. She's my daughter. She is beautiful, <laughs> Mija. And so anyway, they sit down, and Hiram's like, oh, you really want to go up against me and like my craziness? And Gladys is like, well. Why don't you, like, deal with the prison? I will do the drugs, and, like, we'll just, like, stay out of each other's way. And Hiram's like, that's cute, but no thanks. I was wondering why he decided not to, like, take this. Like, what kind of power does he have at this point where he can be like, I will crush you if you don't listen to me? You know what I mean? Yeah, I like, don't know. I don't, like, unless he was just saying, like, I will cut you, like, somehow because I'm a mafia boy, you know? Maybe he's just trying to also, like, act like he does have a power position because, like, if he acts like a bitch ass and, like, she's going to take advantage of him, right? So, like... Right. Maybe him just acting like he doesn't need her should be like, oh, okay, like maybe he is, he's good then. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Anyway, I don't know. So, right before Gladys, she's Gladys is like, oh, so you're not going to budge? Okay, well, I have something to say. And Veronica, like, literally lurks in right away. She's like, wait, 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 wait. Why don't we do this instead? So, she turns to her dad and she says, you always wanted me to be a part of like the business, and I can totally get behind you, like, doing the the jail stuff because it's like le more legit um i'll help you and so he looks at her and he's like okay i'll do it i'm like you're gonna do it because huh? your daughter asked you to like yeah. since when did you become that weak hiram what the hell so he's like okay cool is your husband fp gonna help me like catch more like people and send them to my jail and she's like don't worry about it i got you and then she's like, well, what about your wife? And he literally says she won't be a factor either way. But what does that even mean? Like he's going to kill her. Like he's going to kill her or like he literally underestimates her and thinks that she's like a yeah. waste woman. Yeah, like he both? both probably. Yeah. I was like, OK, should we be worried about Hermione at this point? And also, like, should we care if she dies at this point? Because she's I been think useless. we should. I think we should probably care. But I don't but think do I you? do at this point. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm pretty over this storyline. <laughs> You're like, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> so then it cuts to Betty and uh she's calling all like the old victims from the farm and she's trying to call, cold call them. Yeah. Um yeah. And she's like, Can you let me know what happened to you while while you're at the farm? Like right. we're doing an interview, a documentary series, and I need to like interview you right now. To, yeah, like, I'm like doing a Netflix series. On. It's gonna be like on A and E. It's gonna be called yeah. S saving um alice cooper 
<laughs> and <laughs> so, so, so uh, anyway, she finally gets one of them to say to call her surviving back. Surviving Edgar. <laughs> surviving <laughs> Edgar. Oh my god. E oh, E. That's, that's bad. That's e bad. Edgar never never. Um. Anyway, sorry. So yeah, so one of them calls her back and is like, "Okay, I can meet you, but like it has to be like some secret spot." She's like, "I got the ticket. This fucking bunker comes in handy for reals." Okay? Seriously. So then it cuts to Archie and Elio, and Archie's basically like, "The bet is off. Like we're not doing this anymore." And he gives him the money back, and Elio's like, "Okay, cool. I'm gonna fucking kill you now. So yeah. that's cool. Bye." <laughs> so yeah, the whole thing is about to start. Well, like soon. Then it cuts to um, the Jones household and everyone's just like having TV dinners on their like TV stands. It was so like ghetto. Yeah. (laughs) And they're all just like hanging out in the living room and they're like, how did it go with the ghoulies? And uh, Jughead's basically like, well, they're all gargoyles now, so it's weird. And the one thing that I will say that I will like bring back to the end of like of our podcast is um, Gladys says it's the same person just a different mask what's the big deal and that Mm -hmm. makes me feel like why are you not afraid of the gargoyle king you know like why are you not afraid of all of that so i really feel like that's why she's probably involved in the gargoyle king situation She's behind it yeah yeah uh anyway so then it cuts to betty and this like next survivor and they're talking in the bunker and she basically tells this really sad story about the fact that like her and her sister got in together like six years ago holy Um, shit but now like her sister's done dead because they were doing this ceremony and she drowned during the ceremony and she died and betty's like what was the ceremony called and she's like it was a baptism and so like betty's like no (laughs) she's like i gotta go talk to you later and so she runs she literally starts running and this is like kind of the apex of the whole episode Josie at the Bonui and she's singing we don't need another hero Damn. by Tina Turner was that good do you like that that was really good <laughs> so then it shows like Archie in the ring and I wrote this down because I needed to make a note and let you guys know once again that I'm pretty sure we've seen yeah. Josie like- sing yeah. in the Bonui or or Veronica, it doesn't matter. While, like, it's being cut between him slow motion fighting Definitely have in seen jail. the sequence. Yeah, yeah, for Definitely sure. Definitely seen it. It's probably the same exact director. It's probably the same exact stock footage. Like, at this point, they have stock footage of Archie fighting in a ring. So they right. could just use that. So I was, and that's what I mean. I just feel like it's very disappointing to see this. And after 13 episodes, the same storyline, like he's back in a ring. He's back to fighting like the shady. He's getting beaten up. He's getting beaten up. Music's playing. Yeah. Like it's it's the same shit. And like if, here's the thing. I will say that if it was like a legit fight, I would be more into it. I'd be like, oh, it's like a legit fight. So that means that like he's going to win. Like, sure, I'm down for it. But because it's also another shady fight, just like it was in jail, I'm just why like, why are we here again? We're literally back here again. So anyway, whatever. He's fighting this 45 year old guy and he's getting his ass kicked. It's pretty bad. And it's cutting between like him fighting and Betty like running for her life to back to the sister. I don't get why she's running. Like, why doesn't she just like get into an Uber? Like, why is she like she's like running across town? I'm like, (laughs) you're not going to get there on time, girl. Like your mom's going to (laughs) drown. But can you imagine? Can you imagine being in a dire situation? And you have to wait for an Uber to get. There? No, it'd be so funny if she like ordered the Uber and she like did an Uber pool. Oh, and then we were all like, "Girl, do you crazy? Like, do an Uber X? Like, what are you doing taking a pool? Like, your oh mom's gonna die." That's a that good commercial, been guys. You guys, yeah. instead of teaming up with Bumble, maybe you guys should yeah. team up with an Uber. Oh my god, that would have been perfect. Guys, hashtag spawn. Um, so then it cuts to the ring again, and he's getting like his ass kicked again, like. And uh, Coach Keller, I'm going to call him Coach Keller now. He's like trying to like help him out in every like single moment. And it was so cute because I thought that it was uh, during Josie singing because she's obviously still singing over this part. But like Josie's like in the she corner. She shows up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She like shows up. 
it was so cute i was like at least she sh- like i was happy that she showed up I think she's like the sense. adrian she's she's and she's like, like yeah archie, oh my god and like no one else was there like nobody even came through with for their friend archie like, like fred, fred wasn't even there. there jughead ain't there like, yeah everybody don't give a fuck about archie no. almost dying in this so it was so ring. cute that she was there and like she was so excited for him yeah well she was like really worried i think for him yeah she was worried um because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, like this guy's an idiot um so <laughs> he's getting his ass kicked he's getting his ass kicked and then so he's at the final round and yeah coach keller's Ke- like don't worry we got this plan like stick to the plan like you know what to do next i'm gonna kick his ass and archie's like yeah yeah he's like losing steam or whatever because he's coach 45 keller's years like- old coach keller's like archie all you need to do is get a knockout to win i'm like yeah he knows that like that's literally like what everyone knows but it's fucking hard to get a knockout like <laughs> he made it literally like, just boxing like, just that is hit him like one uppercut and like you'll get it you'll do it no like it's hard it's not that easy uh so anyway he does like kind of kick his ass at the very end but then he doesn't knock him out and then the scores go up and he still loses like i didn't understand this because it did look like archie was getting his ass beat for most of the match so like when he lost coach color was like it's okay bro like i know you were supposed to win like this is rigged i'm like uh, I don't know. Like, it didn't really look like he was <laughs> supposed to win that match. Like, he got his like, ass beat. Like, I would have, yeah, I would have scored him low too. Like, he was yeah. getting his ass kicked. Um, and I'm like, so that's the thing that kind of annoyed me. So he loses and he still doesn't yeah. get money. He still doesn't get the money. Like, He's such an bro, idiot. Like, you should have just He's lost. Such an idiot. Like, for real. Like, while well, your integrity is still standing, but your face is brock up and you still lost the match. Like, you, you literally walked away with nothing but a nothing. busted up face. So basically, it's like the episode never happened. Like, let's just do, <laughs> let's go like, back to the start of the episode. <laughs> It's like fucking, is this bizarro deal or what <laughs> it's more like fucking netflix's uh like thing uh. <laughs> damn like episode um so then it cuts to the baptism and everybody's like in a circle and the first thing i wanted to say right now and i'm gonna say it because i know it's gonna happen soon but also like i was very disappointed that it hasn't happened i yet. know i thought we Where were gonna see him the fuck is Edgar fucking ever never? Why is he not performing the one and only baptism we're gonna ever see on this goddamn show? Like, I, if I, I know, if I, I 100% agree with you. Like, I, I don't this, know what to say. This would have been an amazing entrance for him, too, to be like, I am Edgar ever never. Yeah, because it's legit a ceremony. Like, he should yeah. be dunking her in the tub. Instead, like, like Evelyn's doing no the fucking, fucking baptism. Sense. Like, Evelyn's doing them. Like, she's a 12 year old girl. Like, how are you going to get her to dunk an adult woman into a, like, a tub and almost kill her? Like, what the fuck is happening? So, anyway, it's happening. Like, I don't. Anyway. <laughs> it's happening (laughs) it's happening so then polly is the one that's putting alice underwater and it was funny because i was like reading some tweets and apparently machin's like deathly afraid of like drowning and like getting yeah getting like feeling that feeling so anyway it was just like a side little comment but polly literally puts her own mother underwater and drowns her i was like she drowns her own mother polly you're a fucking loser what yeah. is wrong with you you psychopath and so she's drowning her and uh benny's uh, betty's like running but she finally like, gets in on time and she sees her like basically lifeless in this like tub. underwater yeah and she like pushes polly out of the way she's like get off of her and i'm like can someone just like like kick guys Polly's literally nobody did head. anything like they were just, just standing her. there looking over like alice she pulls her mom out of the tub she does like a shitty version of CPR, but like poor girls, like freaking out. She's yeah. like, "Can someone call nine one one?" Nobody moves. Like nobody flinches. But I'm, I'm like, like, "Polly, yeah. you're I'm fucking like- dead to me, bitch. Like you are done. <laughs> like, dead like social me. services need to take your kids because you're fucking For real. Someone save Juniper and Dagwood. She's so an in the end, mother. she saves her mom. Like Alice, like obviously, like wakes up. Yeah, right? she comes back and to she's life. She's fine. Yeah, and she's like, okay, I'm cool. And anyway, like, oh, God, I can't. So then it cuts back to Archie and Josie at the ring. And she's like, well, well, your face is fucked now. So uh, good job on that one. And yeah. she's like, she's like, literally do anything, but don't fuck, but up, your fuck face. up your face. And he done fuck up his face. Like, girl, you have your hands full with this man. 
<laughs> they, they looked <laughs> like, so cute though they were so cute though and so he's like so how was your show and she's like i already killed it obviously i was like avi i was like oh i love Josie. she's so cute and so then she's like do you want to go to pops and he, or she's like or do you want to like wink wink oh my wink, god wink, wink, this wink. Was <laughs> and yeah. i wanted to text you and be like girl was, do you see because it was so like she was like do you want to go to pops for a milkshake he's like uh, 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 he's like, uh, like he uh, definitely uh. didn't want that kind of milkshake he's like oh he wants that <laughs> chocolate milkshake Ooh, girl <laughs> i feel like whenever he gets into a fight or gets his ass Aww. kicked he always like he wants, wants to fuck yeah it's so true like, <laughs> i'm like i don't you have any energy like he'd be so dead <laughs> he's like i am 18 years old i am very virile yeah right now. Uh, yeah so, so then it cuts to it cuts to like this amazing love making make no. out scene. Oh, They're was kissing. it right there? Yeah, it's right then and there. Oh, it's literally okay. like they cut, cut to it. To right, it. And right, I'm right. like, just please. Ugh, I was like, I need to rewatch that shit again. Yeah, like that just was that one such moment. A hot it was amazing. And their like, that's their chemistry, like I said, their chemistry is on fire. They're so good together. Yeah, he, they really are. He they really just, are. I don't know. He he seems more playful with her. Like their body like you could just see it like i don't know like the body language like with with her he's he looks more confident with her yeah whereas like with veronica it felt like veronica was like overpowering him too much like for sure anyway don't make too many comparisons because the varchi fam is gonna like come. i just loved it yeah i just loved it (laughs) anyway so it was great and then it cuts to the lodge residence and um this part really confused me so Hiram basically finds out something he finds out that Hermione made a donation to someone who did she make a donation to the governor to To the governor governor. right right the governor she's like oh you made like a little donation like what happened there and um he's like oh so it's your the reason why like I don't have any like drugs anymore and she turned like before she's able to answer Veronica turns and is like it was me it was me I was the one that burned all your drugs and your equipment I did it for us I did it for the entire family and Hiram basically turns her and she's like okay cool you owe me seventy five thousand dollars okay she's like okay She's like, okay, cool. So basically, I'm paying your fucking wife and her deal, and now I'm paying you for the fake deal. Like, there's so many. I have many- no idea what is going on. Like, first of all, your I'm poor lost. fucking daughter is struggling through life right now. She's struggling. You were so lucky that she is not as stupid as Archie and failing out of school because she has like nothing to live for at this point. She's a fucking dr- <laughs> like, she, like she's got so many fucking debts to pay like she's not even in college yet she's not even in college and she already has over a hundred thousand dollars to pay off (laughs) like fucking praying for this girl jesus Uh. christ so and then her and that's the thing like Hiram I think like that and this is the part that I'm kind of interested about like do you think that like Hiram and Gladys are in on all of this shit together. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Right? I wouldn't be surprised. It just felt like the way that it all kind of all yeah. happened. I was like, okay, so they're basically trying to shake down like Hermione and like And everyone Veronica. else, basically. Yeah. yeah. So cause then he turns around to to Hermione as if he knew what was happening and he's like, Okay, well you owe me seventy five thousand dollars. He looks at Hermione, he's like, Yeah, yeah, he it smiles. was very fast. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, so he knows that she knows that he knows, you know what I mean? Like oh my God. it's almost like this whole thing and he's still trying to like play Hermione and Hermione's not stepping forward and being like, No, but like this is the real, real story, you know? Like Poor Veronica is literally stuck in this adult storyline and I'm like, just go back and be a kid, please. Like, I'm just praying for you right now. So then it cuts to Gladys and she comes in with like these gargoyle, gargoyle big babies like run into the trailer and Jughead and um, Jellybean are like sitting on the couch. They're like, what the fuck is happening? And Gladys is like, stand down. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. And then she's like, take off your stupid masks. Like they work for us now. And once again, this is another reason why I think that she's a gargoyle queen. Like, yeah, for sure. This, how did she get that guy back? You know what I mean? Like, what deal did she make to pull him, pull him in? Other than her saying, like, don't worry about it. I am the gargoyle queen. Like, I got you, fam. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really feel like she must be. And I think I'd be okay with that. I think that if she yeah, is the I one think that starts always, this shit. 
Yeah. And she's like, and you said, she, like, it might be a woman versus It's probably going to be a woman. And like, her coming back in this season as a new character, it totally makes sense. So. Yeah. And I would be okay with that versus like Edgar yeah. Ever and Ever because we've never yeah. fucking seen his face yet. Yeah. So then it cuts to the final scene is the Cooper residence. And Betty's still like trying to call this girl that she left in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> she's like yo but she doesn't realize that she's like there's no signal in the bunker so she's never gonna be able to call her <laughs> she like, literally <laughs> left her down there <laughs> and I'm like alice is staring off into the distance like she's staring off into nothingness and she's like oh wow that was great and yeah she looks like how you would look after like a massage <laughs> like kind of like that <laughs> like she was very like at peace and like quiet but like yeah. shocked but like looked pretty too <laughs> yeah like very relaxed <laughs> yeah so betty's like don't worry we're gonna get you some help like it's t- not a problem um polly like put you underwater like your fucking daughter is crazy as fuck like we need to like figure this out and basically alice says exactly what we expected her to say she's like no i was reborn i saw my purpose i saw the light and now that i've been baptized i can let go of this last thing and i was like let go of what and she's like yeah what are you gonna let go of and she's like I'm going to sell this, this house. house. I thought she was, was going like, to burn oh. it down to the ground. Yeah, me too. I thought for sure she was going to like light that shit up. I yeah, like, I thought oh, she was going to pull like a fucking Cheryl and just burn the whole yeah. fucking house down. Yeah. And then she's like, and you and me and Juniper and like, and already like Betty's just like losing her mind. She's like, fuck my life. <laughs> like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's how the episode ends. Yeah. And I'm like, what the? Bat shit crazy. Bat shit crazy. So I don't know what's happening. Um, I really don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, yeah, that's me too. <laughs> that's how how I feel about this episode. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Let us know what you guys thought about the episode. It was really, really tame for me. Like, I don't feel like, like it's like what you were saying. It's like they did try to like connect a few dots, but in this, like, while they do that, they make things more confusing somehow. Like I very confusing. Very. I, I'm very confused. And like where the fuck is Edgar Ever Never? Like when is he gonna appear? And it better be the most epic appearance of all time. Cause at this point, if he didn't show up for Alice's baptism, I don't know why he would show up at this point. Like you've missed every big moment in in the farm's storyline so far. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I'm just whatever. All right, guys, let's get into our recap roundups. Recap roundups. Best, best moment. moment. My best moment, I think, and we probably have the same one. It's gonna be the Archie, our chosy sexy. We do. I was just like, living for long. Living for it. Yeah, it was so good. It was literally the best part of the entire episode. Um, they really, I don't know what it is with the editors, or maybe we're just really feeling this relationship. But like, I watch it, and I'm so like, I could be like doing nothing and just like playing on my phone, and then I turn, and I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, no, and I think like the editors like it's pretty much the same like i feel like varchi has had those scenes in front of his window like it definitely yeah. looks the same but it's just their chemistry it's just it's just something different it was sure. very yeah it was just very romantic it had like a different vibe to it that i don't but feel like, like we've still seen. sexy and still like, sexy yeah and still yeah, intimate yeah. and still like very passionate i loved it wtf moment uh what was your wtf moment Okay, my WTF moment, I think, I wrote down Gladys and Jughead at the end. Mm-hmm. I said, "Is does he know that his mom is planning something, like a takeover? I didn't understand what happened at the end with Jughead, because his face looks like he's shocked. Like, yeah. What I was like he so shocked like, at? Between Gladys and FP, he's just, like, getting gagged every episode. He's like, "What's my? what are my parents doing right now? Yeah, like, it I is just very didn't understand confusing. why his face was like, what? I mean, I think he's just confused because he's like, oh, these fucking gargoyles are now, like, in my living room when they were trying to True. kill us, like, five minutes True. ago. So I think it's just very weird that, uh, like, he just thinks that it's all shady. And he should think it's all shady. Because up until now, he's just assumed that his mom is just, like, in town because... He, she's a mom right like he has no idea that her she's doing all this other side shit exactly exactly so now i think it's like oh, yeah. he's po- totally gagged for sure he's starting to feel like very like confused by it all yeah yeah um Makes and sense. i hope he like i hope he like puts down the serpent jacket because he's not doing a good job at being a leader and he should just like become a detective again for a second yeah because he can figure this out real quick my wcf moment is Polly drowning her own mother effing mom like what the f- what are sure. you doing with your life girl like Go find some other leader that doesn't have you kill your own mom by accident. Like, I just didn't understand. 
we know that Polly was like batshit, but like this is like not <laughs> this is not normal. This is not what you would do to your yeah. m- mother. Like there's nothing that makes sense about this whole story. Um, it was fucked up. MVP. What was your MVP? My MVP is gonna go to Archie and Josie together as one entity because they did come <laughs> together as one entity at the end of the episode. So Ooh. I I just I just love both of them together. I love how they're kind of like vibing off each other as actors and as characters. I just I love it. They're yeah. my MVP. And they're like honestly the my favorite part of this. Like yeah, the episode was shit in my opinion. Like I hated it. They were the only saving <laughs> grace. So. <laughs> like they're literally don't hold back girl jeez <laughs> literally uh yeah hashtag Archosi. is that the ship name that we're going with guys just, I don't know I'm, I'm still know. not feeling it but like whatever yeah it's either that or Jarchi but I feel like people use Jarchi for Jughead Jarchi's and Archie Jughead yeah which is weird anyway um my MVP is gonna be Betty cause I think that like either even though she likes actually now that i'm thinking about i don't know if i make her my mvp because she goes and saves her mom and now her mom's gonna sell the house and like ruin her life no i think she was still like mvp though for sure like she's trying to discover like this whole situation but at the same time she still keeps losing i just wanted her to punch polly to be honest i wish that she like clocked a bitch and like did, did something and that's the thing like whatever happened to her like like inner anger like where did it go like just punch someone <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like, remember when she used to like do the hand clench couldn't she like hand clench and like punch her sister <laughs> like i don't know anyway lvp so my lvp is polly because she's a waste girl and you know right. exactly why who's right. yours um i i said the serpent because i was like oh, they yeah. came so hard with their sexist fucking jokes and yeah. like it came out of left field because like they've never said shit like that they've never acted like we're the guys and you're the girls and like yeah. all of a sudden it was about that and like they didn't even throw like a period joke in there anywhere like <laughs> if you're gonna come through with like your sexist jokes like at least be like is she on her period you're like, your rag yeah yeah Something. like where do we get that like yeah. at least give us that so they're my lvps yeah i'm i'm yeah i, I agree the best, best line. line um i didn't have a best line <laughs> i'm just gonna put uh, it out there i I'm have not two even and they're lie. both from josie <laughs> so. <laughs> you can take both of them go for it girl yeah the first one is don't go messing up that pretty face of yours andrews i'm going to like it oh okay and he does it he's he so cute goes he and still fucks does up it, his though. face anyway yeah oh and then the second one is from archie what he's telling josie he's like before being the headliner you gotta be the opening act and then josie's like oh like i like, as if like i yeah. know like she like rolls her eyes it was cute yeah it was so cute they honestly guys just have a, a spin-off of our josie well, let's do that instead i'm down yeah. for that just yeah. pitch that storyline i'm into it all right guys that is the end of our podcast let us know what you guys thought about this episode sorry about everyone who's created this show and listens to this <laughs> we don't you don't mean to just throw so much shade but like really i know that you guys can do so much better so yeah that's and all like, I'm honestly say. like i feel like we have this platform where we do have a podcast and like we can say what we want to say it's yeah. our opinion i don't hate the show completely it's just no. they have some off weeks and and i'm gonna say that i'm not gonna lie and say like oh my god this episode was like so amazing there's exactly. good parts to it but overall you know you gotta yeah. be better exactly we're not we're still we're still here for it we're still here for the characters don't get me wrong we still love our characters we're just uh not loving the storyline so much um yeah like i said let us know what you guys think um some announcements we just want to do a quick thank you to our patrons of the episode our lit rewinders tina ann sarge serena and our mommy rewinders becca sarah and tamala and if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. If you join, you'll get access to all things recap, rewind, exclusive contest, content, and updates. And mm-hmm. you'll get the special podcast that we did oh, yeah. on the top five things we change about Riverdale season three. So that's only available on our patreon.com page if you want to hear it if you want to hear us rant trust me you want to hear that podcast it was really <laughs> it was really it was a fun one therapeutic. to do for sure yeah, yeah. very yeah. therapeutic <laughs> yeah um and also make sure you guys are checking us out on all of our socials instagram twitter youtube speaker iHeartRadio, 
Google Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, we're everywhere. And make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing, and reviewing us if you guys are on any of those channels on iTunes. Um, all your stars really, really matter, and uh, we'd really appreciate it if you guys can send us some love. For sure. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.